Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzong. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 28th of June. India overtakes US in vaccine doses given amid dip in fresh COVID cases. Baloch activists intensify protest against enforced disappearances by Pakistani forces. And seven killed dozens injured in explosion at building in Bangladeshi capital. And now for all the details. India's Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan on Monday termed the country's COVID-19 vaccination record as historic as India surpassed the United States in total number of doses administered so far. This comes amid a dip in fresh infections, while presence of the new Delta variant of the coronavirus remains a concern. India's Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan addressing the 29th group of ministers meeting on COVID management on Monday termed the country's vaccination record as historic as India surpassed the United States in total number of COVID-19 doses administered so far. India has given over 323.66 million doses to its citizens, while US has administered about 323.32 million doses so far. After a fall in infections from May's daily peak of 400,000, India has redoubled its efforts to inoculate the country's 940 million adults amid supply constraints and fear of a third wave. On Monday, 46,148 fresh COVID-19 cases were reported in India in the last 24 hours, the lowest since April 13. Active cases have further declined to 572,994. We have given 32 crore, 36 lakh, 63,297 doses to our countrymen. And this number is historic today because today we have overtaken United States of America. Meanwhile, India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman on Monday announced a credit guarantee scheme worth Rs 1.1 lakh crore for COVID-affected sectors and Rs 50,000 crore for health sector as part of steps to support businesses hit by the pandemic. State governments have eased lockdown restrictions this month after a fall in cases, but scientists fear that the presence of the Delta variant, which was first detected in India, could trigger another wave of infections. Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has said that the people of Pakistan administered Kashmir will not follow a puppet regime such as Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan's government. Addressing an election rally on Sunday, he blamed people in the illegally occupied region were facing a tsunami of inflation and were being made to bear the burden of the government's failures. Chairman of PPP, the Pakistan People's Party, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, on Sunday said that the people of Pakistan administered Kashmir will not follow a puppet regime such as the government led by Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan. During an election campaign in Pakistan-administered Kashmir, Bilawal hit out at the Imran Khan-led government and said people in the illegally occupied region were facing a tsunami of inflation and were being made to bear the burden of the government's failures. Pakistan People's Party wants to Kashmir is Azad Kashmir ke awam ka paisla kare. Pakistan People's Party chahti hai ke Kashmir ke faisle ya Kashmir ke sar zameen pe kiya jai Islamabad mein nahi, Bani Gala mein nahi, Wazir Azam Haq mein nahi. Pakistan administered Kashmir will hold the Legislative Assembly election on July 25, despite appeals to postpone the polls due to fears of coronavirus spread. 
Locals have long blamed that successive governments in the illegally occupied region have only worked at the behest of Islamabad and discriminates against them. Moving on, the Baloch National Movement staged a demonstration in Amsterdam this past weekend against enforced disappearances by Pakistani forces in Balochistan. Activists have intensified their protests across Europe to demand the United Nations and the international community to intervene to stop what they term genocide of Baloch people. Baloch activists have intensified protests across Europe to condemn forceful abductions of political activists by Pakistani security forces in Balochistan. Pro-freedom Baloch party, Baloch National Movement, this past weekend staged a demonstration at the Dam Square in Amsterdam against enforced disappearances and highlighted the case of Dr. Deen Mohammed Baloch, who was abducted by Pakistani forces 12 years ago. They demanded the UN and the international community to intervene to stop gross human rights violations in Balochistan. So there are thousands of Baloch students, doctors, lawyers who are still missing in Pakistani secret torture cells. But the problem is that the international community is silent and Pakistani establishment, Pakistani intelligence agencies, Pakistani ISI, Pakistani MI are enjoying the impunity and the silence uh, by the international community. Activists blame Balochistan has been witnessing an increase in extrajudicial killings and enforced disappearances since the launch of the China-Pakistan economic corridor in the region to silence critiques and instill fear. They say any attempts to highlight the situation is also muzzled with force. U.S. President Joe Biden has assured Afghan leaders Ashraf Ghani and Abdullah Abdullah during their U.S. visit last week of sustained American support after the withdrawal of troops, but made it clear that the fate of Afghanistan will now be in the hands of its people. However, amid continued escalation of violence by the Taliban, former Vice President Abdul Rashid Dostam has vowed to return to his home province to suppress the Taliban. Afghanistan's former Vice President Abdul Rashid Dostam, who is in Turkey for treatment, said Sunday he will soon return to his home province of Jorjan to suppress the Taliban in the north after consultation with President Ashraf Ghani and the Defence Ministry. Referring to Taliban offensives in northern provinces, Dostam said, I predicted this years ago. This comes as the Taliban has intensified their offensives against Afghan forces on multiple fronts. Since the United States announced plans in April to withdraw its troops with no conditions by September 11, after nearly 20 years of conflict, violence has escalated throughout the country as the Taliban seek to control more territory. Amid growing concerns about the fate of the current government with continued escalation of violence by the Taliban, Afghan President Ghani and Abdullah Abdullah, chairman of Afghanistan's High Council for National Reconciliation, met U.S. President Biden at the White House last week. During the meeting on Friday, Biden called on Afghans to decide the future of their country as the last U.S. troops pack up after 20 years of war and government forces struggle to repel Taliban advances. Biden said U.S. support for Afghanistan was not ending but would be sustained despite the U.S. pullout. The crisis has fueled grave concerns that the Taliban could regain power allowing a resurgence of al-Qaeda. U.S. and U.N. officials say the extremists maintain close links with the Taliban. A massive explosion rocked Bangladeshi capital late on Sunday, killing at least seven people and injuring at least 50 others. It was not immediately clear what caused the explosion, but reports suggested gas cylinder blast caused the explosion. Authorities have formed a four-member probe body headed by Director of Operations of the Fire Service to investigate the incident. At least seven people were killed and more than 50 people were injured in an explosion in the Bangladeshi capital late on Sunday, police said. The cause of the blast, which occurred on the ground floor of a three-storey building on a busy street in Dhaka's Mog Bazar area, was not immediately known. Television footage showed mangled pillars, broken concrete and glass shards strewn across the street. 
Shafiqul Islam, Dhaka City Police Commissioner, told reporters that seven people died in the incident and 50 others have been admitted to hospitals. It was not immediately clear what caused the explosion, but the main building where the explosion took place had a fast food shop. Primary evidence suggested gas cylinder blasts caused the explosion. Meanwhile, authorities have formed a four-member probe body headed by Director of Operations of the Fire Service to investigate the incident. The committee will submit this report within seven working days. Sri Lankan wildlife authorities on Sunday tussled to capture an almost nine-foot crocodile, which arrived at the doorstep of a home in Sri Lanka's Habarana. After a long struggle, the reptile was finally captured and later released at the Mineria National Park. When a resident in the village of Habarana in Sri Lanka opened her front door in the early hours of Sunday, the last thing she was expecting was a deadly, almost nine-foot crocodile at the doorstep. Wildlife officials were quick to reach the scene after the house owner called the police. But footage from a local network showed the authorities struggling to capture the reptile as it spun around to avoid being caught in full view of residents who had gathered. <laughs> The restive crocodile was finally caught and later released at the nearby Mineria National Park. The island nation of Sri Lanka is known to have crocodiles in its waterways and irrigation tanks in villages and cities. A clothing store named Pakistani attire in India's northern Punjab state is winning hearts and has garnered a lot of love and praise on social media. People are praising the owner of the store for bringing Pakistani suits to India and this has become an unconventional platform to unite the citizens of disgruntled neighbours. A women's clothing store in India's northern Punjab state named after Pakistan has become an unconventional platform to unite the citizens of disgruntled neighbours. The garment store named Pakistani attire in a busy market of Ludhiana city has been getting a lot of love on social media, especially from neighbouring country. Pakistan se itna acha reaction mujhe a raha hai, meko wahan se calls a rahi hai, meko media approach kar rahi hai. तो वो ये विदेशी वो बहुत खुश हो रहे हैं वहाँ पे कि वो हमारा एक पाकिस्तानी अटायर के नाम से कि आपने ये नाम कैसे चुना और आप कितने सालों से बैठे हो उनको पता लगा जब ये मैं कि इतने सालों से रन कर रही हूँ और ऐसे सूट्स की बहुत फाउंड है तो इट्स अ मैरेकल फॉर मी Chopra's clientele is not limited to India and she has received orders from the United States, Canada, New Zealand and other countries too. हाँ जी बिल्कुल अच्छा होगा इसमें कोई गलत नहीं है जो हमारे पास है हम देंगे जो उनके पास है वो वो देंगे बट ऑब्वियसली बहुत अच्छा ही है After the picture of the shop got positive comments from Pakistanis on social media, some users also started sharing pictures of shops in Pakistan, mainly food related, named after places in India. The nuclear armed neighbors have experienced an increase in tensions over the past few years and both sides often exchange fire along the borders. However, a ceasefire has remained in place since February. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India overtakes US in vaccine doses given amid dip in fresh COVID cases. Baloch activists intensify protest against enforced disappearances by Pakistani forces. And seven killed dozens injured in explosion at building in Bangladeshi capital. Now viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. 
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन